Hey everybody, this is Brian, RKS Creative's in-house audio wizard, and I'm here today to share with you my approach for sweetening source audio with EQ, specifically using this tool to attenuate and sometimes enhance key frequency areas commonly found in vocal audio sources for our various wedding, corporate, and tutorial-based projects. Before we dive in, I want to make clear that the word sweetening is not a technical term, but rather a word commonly used by myself and other audio professionals to describe the ideal result of EQ, which is really making a sound more pleasing to the ears. EQ stands for equalization, and is the process of intentionally altering the frequency response of a signal through cutting, attenuating, boosting, or shelving certain frequency ranges to correct for previous unequal response, hence the term equalization, and to achieve better harmonic balance. In this tutorial, I'll be using Adobe Premiere Pro's Parametric Equalizer, but these techniques can be applied to any equalizer in any audio or video editing software. An equalizer typically consists of several independently adjustable bands, each of which have three primary controls, frequency selection, gain, and quality control, more commonly referred to as simply Q. You'll notice that these controls vary depending on the type of band. Premiere's Parametric Equalizer consists of five center bands, or bells, a high and low shelf, as well as a high pass and low pass filter. For each of the center bands, the frequency selector selects the center frequency. The gain control determines the amount in decibels that the selected frequency is boosted or attenuated. And the Q control determines the bandwidth or range of frequencies affected. The lower the Q, the wider the range of frequencies affected, and the higher the Q, the narrower the range of frequencies affected, allowing you to really zero in on a particular frequency. The low and high shelving bands work differently. Instead of boosting or attenuating around a center frequency, all the frequency content above the selected frequency, in the case of the high shelf, or below the selected frequency, in the case of the low shelf, is boosted or attenuated. The two options for Q in this case are slope controls and determine whether the adjustment happens gradually or more dramatically. The low and high pass filters, disabled by default, are similar to the high and low shelving bands, but rather than boosting or attenuating the frequencies above or below them, they filter them out. The high pass filter allows the frequency content above the selected frequency to pass through, thus the term high pass filter, and filters out all frequencies below. The low pass filter does the opposite, allowing frequency content below the selected frequency to pass through while filtering out all frequencies above. Instead of a gain control, the high and low pass filters feature a decibels per octave slope control, which controls how drastically frequencies are filtered out beyond the selected frequency or cutoff frequency. Put simply, the higher the number, the steeper the slope, and the lower the number, the more gradual the slope. So now that we've gone over the theory, let's look at some practical examples. Okay, so first example we've got here is a clip from a father of the bride speech. First thing we're gonna do is simply listen to the clip a few times and ask ourselves this question. What is it about this sound that we don't like? And the union of two families. Let's play it again. And the union of two families. Now this source actually sounds pretty good, pretty clean, uh, but what I can hear in the sound is some lower mid-range honk that is masking the clarity of the voice. So we wanna pull some of that out. First thing we'll do is add the parametric EQ effect to the clip by selecting the clip and double clicking on the effect in the audio effects and then hit edit to bring up the plugin window. Now I'm gonna change the range to 30 decibels rather than 96 decibels so I can make finer adjustments. I personally very rarely make any EQ adjustments greater than 10 or 12 decibels or so. Then we'll set the clip to loop by selecting the clip, hitting forward slash to set my in and out points around the clip and enabling loop. If you don't have this button in your transport already, which I don't right now, you can add it by clicking on the plus icon in the lower right hand corner of the program monitor to bring up the button editor, 
and then drag it from the button editor onto the transport, just like that. And so now that it's enabled, you'll notice that we uh, will be looping here. And the union of two families. And? And the union of two families. There we go. So now with the source playing, we're going to select one of the lower bands in the EQ window. So in this case, the second 200 hertz center band. And click and drag that up to around, let's say, plus 10 decibels. And let this sound play. And the union of two families. And the union of two families. So now you'll notice that this low mid muddiness is really emphasized now, and it's actually causing my meter over here to clip. We're going to use this technique to zero in on what specific resonance is causing that. And we're going to do that by sweeping the frequency up and down the frequency spectrum until we can hear and see on the meter a sudden increase in volume. And the union of two families. And the union of two families. And there it is. And the union of two families. Right there around 190 hertz. Did you hear that? So now we're going to decrease the gain until the low mid-range balances out. Again with the source playing. And the union of two families. And the union of two families. And the union of two families. And there you go, much better. So now that I have the low mids taken care of, I can notice something else in the sound. Do you hear that harsh attack when he accents that syllable and? And the union of two families. This is caused by an overemphasis of what's known as the presence range of the human voice that our ears are most sensitive to, which exists between one and five kilohertz. I would say that on probably 80 to 90% of the source audio that hits my desk, I always take at least some of this out to achieve a more balanced sound. So for this high end harshness, we're going to use the same technique. Grab one of these higher bands, so in this case band 4, drag it up, and then start to sweep it around until we can hear those frequencies pop out. And the union of two families. And the union... Okay, yeah, right there around 2100 hertz, or 2.1 kilohertz. Let's bring that down. And the union of two families and the union of two families. And there you go, much smoother. Now we can AB this clip before and after EQ using the bypass button in the top left hand corner of the plugin window and compare the results. And the union of two families. And here's after. And the union of two families. All right, in this second example, we've got a clip from a ceremony efficient that didn't turn out the best. You'll notice that the audio sounds thin, and there's a lot of high-end harshness and some sibilance poking through. You know all these things, all these promises, and hopes and dreams. Let's take care of that high-end harshness first. So I'm going to add my EQ, change the range back to 30 dB. And let's grab that number four band and pull it up. Now careful when you do this with sources that are especially harsh or turn your volume down. You don't want to damage your ears. You know all these things, all these promises and hopes and dreams. You know yeah. all these. Right there around 2.4, 2.5K. Let's bring it out. These things, all these promises and hopes and dreams. You know all these things all these promises and hopes and dreams. There we go. So that harshness is taken care of now. Now let's tackle those sibilants. Unlike the presence area, which covers a wide range of frequencies, sibilants tend to be pretty specific. So before we raise our gain, let's raise our Q. To narrow the band of frequencies, we're going to focus on with band 5 here. It's up to maybe around 10. Now, Depending on the speaker, those S's could be anywhere from, say, 5K on upwards of 10K sometimes. So let's start at the lower end of that and slowly sweep it up and down while the source is playing, of course, with the gain turned up. You know all these things, all these promises and hopes and dreams. You know all these things, all these promises and hopes and dreams. 
I'm hearing a lot of frequencies poking out, but it sounds like the worst of it is right around 6.4k here. I'm going to keep my cue tight and bring the gain down quite a bit to remove as much of that S as possible. You know all these things, all these promises and hopes and dreams. You know all these things, all these promises and hopes and dreams. Now that sounds better. There's actually a better tool for doing this called the de-esser, but we'll cover that in a different tutorial. Last thing with this example is that thinness we talked about. There's a lot of low end missing from the sound. You know all these things. We're going to correct this by using one of the low bands to add some warmth back in. This time I'm going to use band number one, and since it's quite a wide range of frequencies that we're missing, I'm going to set its cue to one to broaden the range of the band. I'm going to drag it up and slowly sweep it around the low end while the source is playing until the voice sounds warm and balanced. All these promises and hopes and dreams. You know all these things, all these promises and hopes and dreams. You know all these things. There we go, right around 100 hertz. Since the audio was so thin to begin with, you can add quite a bit of gain here, but careful not to add too much to avoid things sounding boomy. Now let's AB the results. So here it is before EQ. All these promises and hopes and dreams. And after. You know all these things all these promises and hopes and dreams. Much better. This third example comes from a first look. You look gorgeous. Thank you. Mm, my goodness. <laughs> Are you ready? Now this one presents two very common issues with source audio in outdoor locations and with first looks in particular low end rumble caused by wind, and a muffled quality due to the mic being hidden under layers of clothes, such as the bride's dress or the groom's tux. But never fear, both of these are relatively easy to fix. So we'll add our parametric EQ, change the range to 30 again, and we'll start with the low end rumble. We'll use the high pass filter for this one, and to ensure that we cut out as much of that low end as possible, we're gonna go with the steepest slope, 48 decibels per octave. What we want to do is raise the cutoff of the filter as high as possible without interfering with the fundamentals of the voices. This is usually around 90 to 125 hertz. You look gorgeous. Thank you. Mm, my goodness. <laughs> Are you ready? You look gorgeous. Thank you. Mm. There, right around 100 hertz is the ticket for this one. Now let's take care of that muffled quality. We'll use a high shelf for this We'll begin by raising the gain up to about 12 decibels or so, and use the more dramatic slope option for the cue to avoid emphasizing too many of those harsh highs we talked about. Now let's sweep the frequency down until the sound comes into balance. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Are you ready? You look gorgeous. Thank you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Are you ready? right at 5.5k. Now, let's A-B the results. You look gorgeous. Thank you. Mm, my goodness. <laughs> Are you ready? You look gorgeous. Thank you. Mm, my goodness. <laughs> mm, my goodness indeed. So there you have it. Some tried and tested methods for using EQ to sweeten your source. I look forward to sharing more wizardry with you in another tutorial. Thank <laughs> you.